we're gonna do is we're gonna paint it orange. And we decided we're gonna test out the systems on the boat. So this is the engine we chose. So when doing these marinizations, you gotta do quite a lot of brackets. She was old and neglected, so we cut her to bear holes and built her up from the ground with our blood, sweat and tears. So follow our journey as we plan to sail her to new destinations and make lasting memories. So we've prepped the underside of the vessel and what we're going to do is we're going to paint it orange. The reason for that was originally orange and also then we don't need to carry a orange blanket in case of capsizing according to South African regulations for a category A vessel. So let's get it painted up. We got started on finishing up the drawers in our galley. And there's our drawers complete in our galley. Just grab over there and open it up. Right now we have all our plastic bags in here for all that stuff. And yeah, it, like really, you gotta pull. <laughs> See, like you, it's not, it doesn't open as easily as people think it does. So we can take off. How many can we take off, honey? Let's what? see if Ricky can guess how much he's done this. Two. Good job. So we can take off. I'll wrench under the boat. What else? And we can take off. Jamal. Oh, yes. That's a good one. There we go. Can't you take off connect up washing machine? No, because it's not connected. I just need to, it is connected, there's power. You just need to, there's your difference. You just need to, it's not finished until it's finished. I swear there's something else we did, didn't we? Nope. Through holes? It's not done, I saw those two. They're really, oh, it's oh, just this. Ah, it's, done. it's not done until it's done, right oh. folks? It's not done until it's done. We had a farewell lunch with Moses before he started working at his new job. Romanes? Yes, Moses. <laughs> so we got Moses a new job and unfortunately due to us tightening everything up um, we're running, starting to run tight on finances. We can't just have Moses around just to clean boats, we'll have to do that ourselves. And um, But we got him a job and hopefully it will be permanent and he'll be able to stick around here for a long time and uh, make his future. So we've given him a base, it's all up to him to what he does with it. But uh, he's been a great help to us and we'll probably still have him on weekends if he's got off weekends and he feels like working. Um, he's more than welcome to come and, and we'll, we'll always have some work to get done, um, especially in this last few uh, months before we go in the water and so yeah so hopefully he he makes a good success out of it we wish him all the best and good luck so it's Easter and we decided we're gonna test out the systems on the boat so we're making our meal testing our, our stove testing our stove for the first time except for coffee we've used it yeah we've made a lot of coffee for our late nights and the boot. So we're making a, a shrimp pita. What did you call this? <laughs> a shrimp pita. A shrimp, um, pita. shrimp shawarma. A shrimp shawarma. Take your African prawns. And the end. I finished it by adding some Everyone knows Rihanna. That's Ariana, it's Beyonce. 
Everyone knows her too. Ended up by putting some spring onions in there, and now we're gonna build our burger. Shawarma. Build my shawarma burger. My prawn shawarma. You can use my hands because it's mine. Some, some of my halloumi, some of my tomatoes. We also started working on our engine and making sure all the adaptions would fit. So this is the engine we chose, it's an Isuzu uh, 4, 4JA1 series engine, um, it's about a 2000 series, 2000, whereas our previous one was like an 80s model, um, much older, there's a lot less stuff on this one going on, it's really basic, one cable to, to start it from the solenoid one, and uh, power to the starter and she runs. Now the biggest thing is when you've got an automotive engine you want to make it marinized, you've got to add a couple of things. Um, one of the things that we need to do is adapt the engine to the gearbox or whatever gearbox you're driving and in our case it's, it's a Z-Drive or an outdrive system from Volvo, it's a Volvo 270 and so we need this pretty much to get driven by the engine. So what we got is we got the clutch plate which adapts onto here which drives onto here directly but we don't run a clutch on here we run the gearbox which has a clutch dog which engages and disengages so the gearbox does that work for us on our particular series but now as you can see the diameter of this and the diameter of, of the engine is not the same so we need an adapter plate which is what we spent in the previous episode where you saw us drawing at Basil's uh, workshop and a big thanks to, to Lanyon Labs for that for you know lending a hand out and using their facilities freaking awesome um, so one of these things, well we got four of these rings to create the spacing of the flywheel and then, which, then we can have our reduction in size. So, so that fits on there, we got four of them, we size them up nicely, we bolt that to, to the engine and then bolt the, um, the bow housing of, of, the, of the outdrive to that adapter plate and that gives us our spacing that we need and the reduction in size. And as long as we line up the centers between the two and this one gets driven by the clutch plate that was there or driven by the torque plate it looks something like this this is just a, a clutch plate exactly but um, take all the clutch all, all the the way the friction surfaces off pretty much looks the same as that so it goes in there without the shaft and um, kind of gives this so if you can think of it like that that would be mounted secured onto that and that would be our output drive to our gearbox kind of same principle that would drive it then so that's the kind of basics on doing the coupling. Um, luckily we have Basil and, and Jake's helping, helping us out. Jake's has done a whole number of these and um, Basil's kind of also had experience with, with how they mount up and that helps a lot. You know, someone knows what's, what's happening, where do you kind of get your faults and all of that. So it's a big help. All the 270s originally came with a V6 inboard motor drives which some of them were putting out in a few hundred horsepower. So driving that power wise we don't have a problem there um, the reduction gearbox ratio as long as we're not getting the tips of the blades on the diameter of what we have to 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 start cavitating which is roughly about 100 miles an hour on the tips of the blades so we don't cavitate um, then we find which we are well below that because it's a low revving engine and the engines that they originally came with were high revving v6s and stuff like that or higher revving v6s than the diesels and uh, we'll be clunking along on this at like 2000 rpm in addition to that we also have the exhaust manifold which will be a stainless steel encased exhaust um, and the reason for that is to reduce the amount of heat that's in the in the cabin area for the engine so we water cool it there and um, the cooling system this is a closed loop cooling system which means the engine is cooled with uh, antifreeze fluid and then we have what replaces the radiator is a heat exchanger so this is pretty much what the once this is encased and all welded up nicely this is pretty much what the exhaust manifold is going to be and you can check that in probably next week or the week after this episode 
uh, we make an episode just on how we made the exhaust manifold for those of you that are interested in marinizing a motor. And obviously, marinizing a diesel engine is not first choice. First choice is you take out $10,000 and you go buy a brand new marine engine and that's first price. I mean, obviously there's no disputing that. There's a reason why there are marine engines and diesel engines because those that can afford and kind of you stick the money and you buy a marine engine. Um, when your budget's a little bit more tight then you kind of get really creative and you do one of these things. And But these engines are good, cheap parts kind of anywhere in the world. These engines were produced for like 10 years and I think they still use some of these series, just the newer one with the compensator, still around the world. So parts we won't have problems for. We also had to make engine mounts. So these are pretty much our engine mounts. The only thing is this still needs to be bent. Uh, we'll take it to some engineering guys to get bends in and uh, with some standard automotive engine mounts on there, just good quality ones. Uh, thanks to Basil for those. And um, so we get this bent into the shape that we want and then that mounts on the edge of. So that will come and mount over here and obviously with its bends and then we have the base frame of, of that sits inside the hole which is that stainless steel frame that you saw us taking out in some of the previous episodes. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Pretty much that stainless steel frame that it, that it gets mounted onto. Now we just bolt it onto that. That couples onto there. And then we've got adjustment settings. We can go inwards, outwards, up, down, and forward and backwards. So we can line up the engine perfectly in the cavity where it goes. The only, another mod that we're changing, this came standard with a 60 amp hour, 65 amp hour alternator. We're boosting it up to 110 amp hour Bosch alternator. Pretty straightforward alternator, no, no new technology kind of stuff. And then we've got a water pump. So the water pump, that we, there's two water pumps on this engine. One water pump drives the water that's cooling the engine itself through the heat exchanger and the second one drives the raw water or the salt water and that comes into the heat exchanger and then that's exactly what it does. It exchanges heat from the salt water into the engine's uh, water and then that exchange is what acts as the radiator. So that would cool. So you need two pumps. It looks like this. We're just busy rebuilding this one. So this will, will drive the salt water. Those typical rubber veins that you see. So it takes one of these rubber veins in it and uh, that delivers us about 60 to 80 liters of salt water every minute and that would allow us to do the, the cooling. Um, so we went according to the specs, if we run a low, we should have sufficient cooling. Uh, we're using the heat exchanger from the previous engine. Uh, we might run into some problems that there's on the higher, higher RPMs, we might have a little bit of, of insufficient cooling. But if it does happen, then we'll change the heat exchanger. We're just gonna try it for the beginning and, and see if we can do it like that without having to buy a new heat exchanger. A couple of differences on these are on the, on the Marini systems. They, they put a governor on the diesel pump so that when you're going down a swell, it doesn't over rev the, the engine as much. Um, but if you're going along at 2000 RPM and it takes it to 3000, not too much of a problem. But when you're at full bore and then you start going down and that will start creating stress and all of that on the engine. So with regard to air intake, uh, there's no, there's not much dust at sea, there is a little bit, but the biggest thing is getting salt particles into the engine and how we're gonna combat that is just put a nice cone air filter, sprayed with the same stuff that we used to spray on dirt bike um, uh, air filters, so it would absorb it and then we just clean that every once in a while and put it back on, hopefully keep the, the salt particles out of the engine. So when doing these marinizations, you've got to do quite a lot of brackets as you saw we did the engine mounts. They still need to be just welded up. They're just like that for sizing. Um, so we needed to do the engine mounts. This is a new water pump bracket that we drew up and got it laser cut and bent. So what you do is in CAD, you draw everything up. Then you send it to the guys that do laser profiling and bending. They laser it up, they bend it for you, get the parts back fitted. Do some mods, like we had to do a couple of trimmings on, on, the, on the stuff. And... Um, that's pretty good. It's not like we're selling the engine. I mean, I still feel it's still very good kind of finishes compared to what we had on this engine. It's freak. This is phenomenal. And um, so here's one of the adjusters for the water pump. So we can adjust the tension on the belt. The belt will be driven off the crank, off the crank pulleys, which are these. And then the the that pretty much goes on there. Has its own pulley over here, and we can adjust that by going forwards and backwards like that. We can adjust the tension. So if you want to service it, also easy to access it from behind. Just remove that plate, 
take it out, put the new impeller in. On the previous one, we needed to disassemble the entire thing just to get to that impeller, which is not the greatest design, but um, that's what we got. Stay tuned till next week where we start working on our engine and put her together. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe below if you haven't already and give us a big thumbs up. If you'd like to join our amazing patron family or make a one-time donation, there are links provided in the description below. Your support means the world to us. Thanks to our awesome new patron, Sean Howie. You're a legend.